Chapter 3 of Team Affinity is here, and a lot of the cards are absolutely incredible. But with Season 2 right around the corner, you're gonna want to pick the right ones first, so you get the most time to actually, you know, use them. And that's what we'll talk about today, the best cards in Team Affinity Chapter 3 that you guys should go after first, the best division that you should tackle. Check out the channel we talked about, the fastest way to get Team Affinity Chapter 3 done. Leave a like if you guys do enjoy, subscribe to the channel, let's get into it. So, which division should you start with first? Who's the best? Well, in my eyes, it's the same as last chapter. That's the American League East. There's not a bad card in this division. I would go on to say every card is really good. You've got certain cards fitting captains that make them even better, but even on their own merit, really, really great stuff, and that's what I would choose first. The runner-up, second place, I'll go NL Central this time. There is some um, one card in particular <laughs> that I don't think is the best of the best, but overall, there's so many top-tier cards in the Central that that is a great one to go with as well. And then finally, third place, we're going to give it to the National League West. Very top-loaded. There's one or two cards that really puts this over the top, and especially we start to fall off on a couple divisions. Unfortunately... Some of them aren't quite as good, but we'll talk about it right here. So, Team Affinity, let's go to the American League East, the division that I think you should start with, even though I did not. Be smart than me. We went after one specific card in the NL West. You probably know who it is. So, in the AL East, you have all batters right here, and really great great stuff. I am going to say Brian Roberts probably is the best card here. Partly because his stats are amazing, but also because he's a switch hitter. And he also fits the David Ortiz theme team. And don't knock it till you try it. He can play center field. He can play the outfield without much issue. And he's going to be so good. He's got one of the best swings in the game. He's got really, really top of the line quirks that Roberts is incredible. I think next, Brad Miller. This card, very good as I expected. Of course, he's a battle royale giant. We all know how good he was year in, year out. And he crushes righties. He's got hundreds against lefties, 100 vision, 100 clutch. Could play each and every single position in the game on top of a great buttery smooth swing. What's not to love? Really good stuff. Next up, we're going to go a pitcher, Mr. Tom Hankey. A squint from the sandlot right there. Honestly... He might be a boring pick. I know Blue Jay fans are sick and tired of seeing him. Uh, I'm sick and tired of seeing you, Blue Jays. Twins blew an eight-run lead yesterday against them. But he's got outlier on the four seam. A, a big drop-off on the fork ball. And he's got some of the best per nines for a relief pitcher in the game. He's going to be really good. DJ LeMayhew. This is the number four card with diamond defense, max contact, max clutch, 97 power left and 100 vision. Tells you how good this division is. He's really good. I don't love his swing, but I, I just don't like right-handers. That's just what it is. Great swing for Wade Box right here. Again, max contact, pretty much max vision and clutch as well. Good enough power. He'll hit some homers, but definitely line out. But who doesn't? Awesome. All five great cards. You really can't go wrong here. And something I do want to point out this chapter is with how it is structured, I don't think you have to take the pitchers first like was previously the plan. If you look at the boss missions, this is really what you want to prioritize, just making sure you are using the past bosses. And then the single player missions is hits and saves. Yes, you do earn PXP faster with pitchers than hitters, but overall, I think pick who you want, especially considering you only got four weeks. We'll move on over to the NL Central, who, again, I think they've got at least one top of the line card, and that's right there, Mr. Kerry Wood. If you played the Extreme Showdown, <laughs> you know, especially when you get on high difficulties, how much of a blur that outlier four seam really can be. 
I need someone to tell me in the comments if that pickoff artist quirk does anything. I've never seen anybody pick anybody off at first base in MLB The Show. Show me a clip. I don't think it can happen. Everybody's you know, John Lester when it comes to throwing a first. It just doesn't happen. But great stats, 112K per nine. For my money, that's the most important stat of the game. Maxed out pitch clutch, great hit per nine, the BB9. Ah, you know, you can't win them all. So overall, pretty good. Eric Davis really liked this card as well. Yes, he's not amazing against righties. Yes, his vision's a little bit low. But he's one of the best guys that you could have on the bench that you could ever dream of because he is max speed, diamond defense. He's, he's merely maxed out against lefties. He's really good. I, I like this Eric Davis a lot. He's got a good swing to him as well. Next up, we're going to pick another bench bat, I suppose, here. There's a lot of great cards that will fit your main team. You need someone for your bench as well. I know people don't utilize their bench quite as much as when uh, pitchers hit. Now that the universal DH is in DD, not quite as much. But a guy like Stargell, you can't get much better. He's got an amazing swing with maxed out stats against righties with max clutch. The PCI is going to be... Huge, gaping, I, I dare say. And, no, nah, I'm not even going to say it defensively. He, he can be good defensively at first, okay? Ryan Ludwig right here. Interesting card because he fits both David Ortiz, 2000's captain, and the Clayton Kershaw captain. And he's not amazing at anything. He's got really good clutch, but he's super well-rounded. 92 arm, gold defense, 70 speed. Really good card right there. And then Robin Young. Ah, uh, he's got good defense, good contact left, good clutch. I don't know. That just doesn't really move me. Now, the NL West, we've basically completed the National League West already because, uh, well, this man right here. Eduardo Escobar, Fogo Power. He is so good. So, so good. Because he's a switch hitter, which again is great on its own. Even better if you boost him with, uh, boost him up with Carlos Santana, and he's already got good power. So his contact will get near max with Slamtana's captain boost. Great clutch. He's got um, most of the infield, 70 speed, gold defense at you know right out of the box, 80 overall. Really, really good card. Always have the handedness advantage. I am loving that Eduardo Escobar so far. Next up, I'm going to give it to Gary Sheffield. He does fit David Ortiz, captain. And I wish he had infield secondaries like he does on some of his cards. But with Ortiz, his contact is 110s both ways. Nearly max power right. Great clutch with a really good swing as well. And 10 quirks. Really tough to beat for Chef. And then we move down a notch a little bit. I'll give Renfro his flowers. I really like his swing. I always pick him at Bat Royale. He's great defensively. Diamond defense, max arm right away, max power. You don't really have to be super on your PCI. You can hit a home run. But at the same time, he's only got 58 vision. So if you're not super high on your PCI, that's it's it will be the show 24 for Christ's sakes. It's a foul ball. Um, next up, CJ Crone. We're gonna pick him. The Crone zone, decent vision could be a little bit better. He's a first baseman, which lowers his value. He's all right. He, don't know what else to say. He's okay. Um, just kind of a boring card. And, and again, that's what I'd like to see differently for Team Affinity. Give us more fun names, which Brian Wilson's kind of a fun name, sadly. I don't think he's good at all in the game. He does not have outlier. He is a four seam and a two seam, which no matter how hard you try to believe that two seams a sinker, it isn't. It does not move the same, at least not in MLB The Show. He's got good per nines, but at what cost? For him to get hit, five footer to dead center? <laughs> Just don't love him. I ain't fearing the beard. Shave it. And then we'll move to the rest of the divisions. I do think there's a drop-off, but the AOS still has a lot of firepower right here. If you look at specifically these two. Edgar Martinez is basically the right-handed Babe Ruth. Minus speed and fielding, if that's possible. <laughs> but he's got 
pretty much maxed out everything offensively except power right and vision. And that's at 100 and 110 respectively. Pretty damn close. He is so, so good. He's got um, eight quirks. And I'll be honest, I don't know if we've ever really gotten a really good Edgar Martinez card like this. I, I couldn't even tell you if he's got a good swing. So I, I'm not going to. I'd be lying. <laughs> I have no clue. But really good stats right there on Edgar. I think he's definitely the choice first. Um, Blake Trinan, love this card. Going to be one of the best relief pitchers in the game. Sinker cutter combo with an outlier sinker is really tough to pick up on. He throws everything hard, and his BB9 is still basically at 100. Love this card. Maxed out hit per 9, K per 9 at 107 as well. He's going to shred, and I'm not looking forward to facing him. Really, really looking forward to using him. I'm shitting in my pants thinking about facing that card. I don't love it. Jim Edmonds, we're going to pick up next year. Uh, he's great against righties, pretty much maxed out stuff. I love his swing. He can play first and the outfield. I like the versatility there. But the speed's low. He's not great against lefties. And that's kind of where I'm talking about with that drop-off from here on out. Then... I guess Bagwell, I know everybody hates the swing. Everybody hates the extreme moment. Don't even do the extreme moment on his uh, AOS Team Affinity program. The stats are fine. Just fine. And then Ian Kinsler again. <laughs> I mean, the contact's kind of low. He is, again, uh, jack of all trades, master at none. Speed, pretty good. Fielding, really good. Clutch, Pretty good. Vision, pretty good. Power, pretty good. Contact, pretty good. Quirks, pretty good. Just nothing outstanding. Nothing really to write home about. And um, that's kind of where we trend down outwards. We'll talk about the AO Central right here. I do think there's a couple good cards and one really bad card. I do think Cliff Lee is probably the best right here. I always like him in the game because the BB9 and the Velocity. Now, Typically, you do want high velocity, but when you've got a combo of lower velo and high BB9 like that, you're basically going to have complete command of the strike zone. Your par is so tight at that point, I mean, it's it, it just going to fit it in there, and you're going to throw dots, and that is going to make it really tough on your opponent if the ball goes exactly where you want to with the perfect input. So I really like that Cliff Lee card. Next up, Count Dracula, Mr. Harmon, Killebrew Root Beer, maxed out power, max discipline. <laughs> not when I'm playing. Uh, contact's pretty good, 100 aside. Fielding, not so much. Ah, you win some, you lose some. He's got good quirks, though. He's got a pretty good swing for a right-hander. And uh, I definitely take him as the best hitter in this crowd. Whit Merrifield, two hit wit, maybe even more, because this card, honestly, is pretty good. He's um, a bit inverse splits. He's got more power against left, but less contact. But overall, pretty solid with max clutch, diamond defense, and can play basically every spot. You can even play him at shortstop with about high silver defense, 80 speed. Pretty damn good card right there. And uh, then Alan Trammell, who's not last because you can't be worse than the last guy. <laughs> Sorry, I promise, White Sox fans, I don't hate you. No ill will. We beat you seven times this year. I have nothing against you. If we play 162 uh, games in a season, I would love it, especially because you guys beat the Guardians. Giolito. I mean, his mix is terrible. He has not a lot of velocity. And what we said about Cliff Lee, his BB9 isn't even that good at 93. <laughs> so bad mix. Per nines are nothing special. And his BB9 isn't even that good. W what do you do? He doesn't even have correct. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's by far the worst team affinity card right there. As much as it pains pains me to say it for you White Sox fans. You guys have suffered enough this year. Uh, then the NL East, which honestly by name value has a lot of interesting players. I just don't think many are that good. I guess I'll say Tom Glavin's the best. He's got that lower velo 98 BB9, which isn't amazing, but it's pretty good. I like Cliff Lee more for the left-handers, but he's he's good. He's solid. He's a decent pitching option. 
And then where do you go from there? I mean, I, we'll just go down the line. I'm kind of underwhelmed by all of these cards. I don't like Sandy Ocantra in the game. I'm not sure what it is. He's got Outlier Sinker. I think he's just really easy to read. He was good at one point when he first really came on. I think in MLB The Show 21 is when his cards got good. His caper nine's low, which you know how foul balls are this year. It's just foul tip after foul tip and makes it really tough to use these guys, put somebody away. I guess we'll go like Mike Schmidt. He's got good power left, but his clutch is under 100. His vision's low. His contact right is low. His speed's low. He's got good fielding and good arm, so that's important, I guess. Except everybody with like 70 fielding and up plays the exact same. Gary Carter, maybe right here. A lot of these guys don't fit on theme teams either. I mean, he doesn't go Buxton, Arenado, Kershaw, Ortiz. I, I don't think he fits Seiya Suzuki's either. Just nothing really too special for Gary Carter or Andre Dawson. I mean, the power's low. Nothing stands out. It, it's weird to me. Like, the same names they pick all the time. If you're going to do that, at least make the cards good. They've got some quirks like... No, he doesn't. <laughs> what? Or did Andre Dawson have no quirks? That's kind of disrespectful. He, he seems flabbergasted. Look at him. He's no quirks. What about Schmidt? Does he have quirks? He does. Carter does. Oh, so we just don't like Andre Dawson. It's a little interesting. A little interesting. But that is Team Affinity Chapter 3. That's how I dissect it. The best divisions, the best cards you should go after first. And get them done now so you actually have a chance to use them. Again, you will have one wild card off the get-go. And in the XP reward path for Season 2, you can earn up to three, three additional to get to four wild cards. So, yes, you can still use these cards after the fact, but only four at a time. And even then, it's going to take some time to get there. So leave a like if you guys did enjoy it. Thank you for watching this one. Plenty more coming soon.